But what I can do is talk about how you approach sound. And Mary will talk about this further from the recording side. Um, I just have a, a, a number of notes here. I want to make sure I hit all the points I talked about. Um, in a sense, you have to ask, you know, what does a soundtrack do for any kind of a film? Uh, documentary, feature, shorts, animation. Um, I think one thing that you think about is that it's about immersion. It's about immersing the subject, the audience in a subject through the sound, through allowing them to hear where you are, allowing them to hear voices with good detail. The more detail, the more immersive it can be. Making you feel like you're part of this scene, be it a place or, you know, an interview, anything. But the quality of the sound, the depth of the sound, the choices in sound all add to this. And I'm not talking about whether it's in 5.1 or not, even though that kind of comes into it at times, but it doesn't matter. It can be in mono. I'm a big fan of mono. Um, and I'd be happy to talk to anybody about that afterwards. Um, it also gives the audience time to think and reflect and ponder about all the information you're giving them. There's a, um, a radio documentary producer, Kay Mortley, based in Paris. And she said, you know, what a soundtrack does is it creates this bubble for the audience where they're in their own world. And they can think. They can think about their own lives, their own problems, their own concerns in relation to what you're giving them. So you're setting off their thinking. You're setting off their imaginations. And it becomes sort of an interactive process of what they're thinking, what you're giving them. And that's a very nice position to be in. And we often feel it when we come out of a film or listen to a radio program like that, that we've been through an experience because it's involved us. And that's partly what a soundtrack does. Um, it's also the way we guide the eye. We focus attention through the soundtrack. Visuals can be looked at in any number of ways. And if any of you have worked in a cutting room or you have the experience of showing films to different audiences, you'll know that you put a shot up one person will see one thing, one person will see another thing. One person's looking at the background, one person's looking at the foreground. How do you guide their eye to where you want them to look? Or do you want them to have the choice of where to look? The sound can help do that. Um, I mean, typically, it's a very obvious example, but if you're working in anything where you would use a Foley effect, a, a sound of a footstep or a body movement, if you want to draw attention to a figure in the screen, and they move, you just put a sound on their movement, the eye will go over to them very subtly. If somebody sneezes, you look at them. So the eye will go where the ear takes them. And in a, in a more sort of poetic, philosophical way, the, the sound, many people would say, adds a certain soul to the image. The images are more neutral in many ways. Um, are there any camera people in the audience? who will disagree with that. Um, so the, the soundtrack is giving this sort of, a, it's an interpretation of what you're seeing. So in a sense, what I always say, what I say to people I work with, what I say to my students is, sound will change the image. You have one image, you put a sound on it, it changes it. Put two sounds on it, it changes it again. Every time you put a sound on, it changes it a little bit, sometimes in small ways, sometimes in very profound ways. Add music, it's a whole different game. So you have to be very careful what is on the soundtrack. You are changing what people are thinking, what they're seeing.